Hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 10-2, the last lecture in this course, on discrete time system design transfer function control. We will actually do one example of each, frequency response design, root locus design, and Poland zero placement design. The objectives are similar to the last lecture that students should be able to use root locus, transfer functions, Bode diagrams, and charts to design discrete time control systems. Students should be able to use constant lead and lag compensators, including PID control, to design a discrete time control system. Recall that lead compensators are an approximation of PD control and are used to increase the gain crossover frequency and add additional phase for a control system. Lag compensators are an approximation of PI control and reduce the gain crossover frequency to a new phase margin. Finally, a lag lead compensator is a combination of the prior two and is an approximation of PID control. In order to design a discrete time system using lag or lead control, it is necessary to use a bilinear transformation to the W or S domain. The W domain is like a continuous time domain where the controller is designed and then converted back to the discrete time. Table 1 summarizes lead and lag comp controllers and Table 2 summarizes second order system characteristics. Here we have Table 1. Recall that for continuous time, a lead controller is K times tau S plus 1 over alpha tau S plus 1, where alpha is less than 1. But in discrete time, it's K times Z minus tau over Z minus alpha tau, where alpha is greater than 1. A lag controller in continuous time is K times tau S plus 1 over alpha tau S plus 1, where alpha is greater than 1. And in discrete time, it's K times Z minus tau over Z minus alpha tau, where alpha is between 0 and 1. Some of the useful equations would be how to calculate alpha, and it's 1 minus the sine of phi max over 1 plus the sine of phi max, where tau is equal to 1 over the maximum frequency and times the square root of alpha. We also have proportional controllers in continuous time as kp, ki over s, kds. In discrete time, it's also kp, as we talked about in the last lecture, and the integral is kitz over z minus 1, and the derivative is kd times z minus 1 over tz. The last column shows an alternate representation for the integral and derivative controllers found by using the bilinear transformation for designing compensators. Here we have table two, which has some discrete time system characteristic equations, including rise time, 1.8 over omega n, 1% settling time, 4.6 over zeta omega n, peak overshoot, e to the negative pi zeta over the square root of one minus zeta squared, percent overshoot, zeta greater than or equal to 0 0.6 times one minus peak overshoot, and phase margin equal to two zeta over the square root of negative two zeta squared plus the square root of one plus four zeta to the fourth. Table three is a summary of the bilinear transformations we will use for digital controller design. We actually used the one on the left in the last lecture, the bilinear transformation for stability, and then we made a Ralph Hurwitz table to test the stability of a digital control system. And it is S equals Z plus one over Z minus one, transforms to Z equals S plus one over S minus one. And for cascade compensation, the transformation is S is equal to two times Z minus one over T times Z plus one which equals z, which equals 2 over t plus s over t, 2 over t minus s. And this is what was used in the prior table to convert the integral and derivative controllers using bilinear transformations. The steps for root locus gain design are to draw the, draw the Bode magnitude and phase plots for k equal 1, determine the required phase margin, find the frequency on the Bode plot that yields the desired phase margin, Change the gain by an amount to force the magnitude curve to go through zero decibels at the frequency found in step three and verify the design by using MATLAB, Simulink, and or SISO design tool. The steps for phase lag lead design are to determine the open loop gain K to satisfy the steady state error requirement, plot the Bode magnitude and phase plot at this gain, find the frequency where the phase margin is five degrees greater than the desired phase margin, Select the upper break frequency for the lag compensator to be one decade below the frequency found in step two. And this asymptote should go through zero decibels. Select the lower break frequency for the lag compensator to be one decade below the frequency found in step, step three. 
and this asymptote should go through 20 decibels. Adjust the gain on the compensator to adjust for any attenuation in the lag network in order to keep the steady state error in step one the same. Finally, verify the design by using MATLAB, Simulink, and or SISO design tool. Finally, the steps for phase lead design. It starts off similar to the other two. You want to determine the open loop gain K to satisfy the steady state error requirements and then plot the Bode magnitude and phase plot at this gain. Next, find the new open loop crossover frequency from the desired omega max. This is where the phase lead will be added. Find the phase margin for Kg at omega x at the desired crossover frequency. Determine the needed phase lead, phi max, and add a five degree adjustment factor. Then compute alpha and tau by using the formulas in table one. And step six is always to check your work by verifying the design using MATLAB, Simulink, and or SISO design tool.